Hey, welcome back to our Achievement Hunter series on a hot streak through the Stormwind gameplay achievements. We've paved the way across the Warrior through Paladin achievements thus far, and this time there are three mage achievements waiting for us to ignite them. Let's get into it. Huh, this should be interesting. In today's video, we're covering the following three mage achievements. Not the face! Taunting us into playing Antonitis and having all three fireballs hit the opposing hero and destroy them. Barbecue Broiler, having us cook up a single ignite to deal 10 damage. And Calligraphy Lessons, ultimately training us to reduce the cost on spells by 300 mana with the Celestial Ink Set. Aside from Antonitis, these don't ask that we destroy our opponent to complete them, so we can conjure up some unusual methods for completing these when it makes things more interesting or efficient. Each achievement guide includes timestamps for each achievement and deck codes for each deck mentioned in the description below in case you'd like to skip to one you're looking for. Now, let's go ahead and light the first flame. And that first flame will be a fairly sizable ignite for Barbecue Broiler. While Ignite does grow to deal one more damage per shuffle into your deck, so it would technically be possible to grow an Ignite to deal 10 damage, drawing it enough times, even with help from Sanctum Chandler, and expecting an opponent to stick around for a Pyroblast level Ignite is a bit optimistic. The quest line can help you get closer if you have it, but you'll need a few additional tricks to pull off this one either way. The deck we used to knock out this achievement was this Quest for Pyro Ignite. It's a quest line mage, which includes Primordial Studies, but to help improve our chances of a Pyroblast Caliber Ignite, it's also running two copies of Imprisoned Phoenix and Prester's Pyromancer. Our first opponent we were set to pull off this combo against conceded with 30 health moments before our phoenixes were about to wake. So note that you'll likely want to go fast on the combo turn to overcome a potential concede if they actually let you play your turn. When we actually pulled off the combo on game 3 instead of game 1, our ignite did 15 damage thanks to an additional phoenix from Primordial Studies alongside a couple pyromancers. So while the quest line certainly helps, it's not vital to pulling this off. Now if you're looking to pull this off in wild, it feels like almost all games over there are finished by turn 8, oftentimes concluding somewhere between turn 5 and 7. So you'll need something swift to boost your spell damage enough to get to a 10 damage ignite. The typical Sanctum Chandler builds of mage to cycle through fire spells with increasing damage due to the infinite cycle potential alongside Sorcerer's Apprentice aren't likely to get to a 10 damage ignite before you run out of time or run out of targets. So we went a little different direction with this Mozaki's Ignite deck. As the name suggests, we're aiming to play Mozaki, Master Duelist, early on in the combo turn alongside quite a few cheap spells we've managed to discount and draw into before our opponent can do their own insane things to kill us. Sanctum Chandler can help draw the ignites and keep the spells rolling alongside Molten Reflected Sorcerer's Apprentices long enough to build up enough spell damage on Mozaki to empower a 10 damage ignite. As you can see in this footage, we didn't have targets on the enemy board to hit with our spells, so we ended up having to kill our own minions to reach a high enough spell damage with Mozaki. But it worked. If you actually face a slower deck unlikely to OTK you, <laughs> supposedly those exist, you can probably set up a less frantic combo turn and might even get away with other methods of increased spell damage. Good luck igniting the barbecue broiler. Next up, we get to see what Grand Magus Antonitis can do to our opponent's face with not the face. The wording on this achievement implies that all three fireballs from a single Antonitis must go face and finish them off. However, in practice, three fireballs hitting the opponent's face was sufficient to complete this, even though the opponent didn't die. 
That was before they updated Antonidas' fireballs to benefit from spell damage. So I'm not sure if the conditions are still the same, but the decks we're introducing today can finish off an opponent with Antonidas' fireballs with a little bit of setup. Before we hop into the decks, you obviously need Antonidas to pull this off. It would be possible to draft Grand Magus Antonidas in the arena, but reliably drafting enough fire spells to activate him and hit the opponent would prove quite the challenge. He should be available in duels buckets, and if you draft a deck almost entirely full of fire spells, even when your deck is diluted a bit later on in the run, there's a decent chance you can chain together three turns with fire spells to activate him. It's a unique challenge, but it's not quite as many hoops to jump through as a lot of the other legendary based achievements when you don't have them. Assuming you do have Antonidas, the deck we use to pull this off in Wild is this Double Trouble deck from one of our viewers, Lucario Blaze. Quite fortunately, we encountered a Highlander Priest who didn't have a guaranteed lethal by turn 7, meaning we could draw to and play out Grand Magus Antonidas. The deck is running a hero power damage package with Mordresh Fire Eye on top, which includes Wildfire. As Wildfire is a fire spell, it serves a dual purpose to prep Antonidas as well. Discounts from Emperor Thaurasan can allow us to play Antonidas a turn early, or pair him with Bran Bronzebeard for 6 fireballs at once. At least as it was before the patch, if 3 out of those 6 fireballs went face, the achievement was complete. And if you didn't pull it off the first time, a couple biscuits from Conjure Mana Biscuit alongside Potion of Illusion can give you an extra shot. It was a fun deck to play and has quite a bit of overlapping synergies. So if you think there's a chance you can queue into a little bit of a slower opponent, you might give this one a try. Though I will point out that Hero Power Mage isn't limited to wild by any means, which is precisely why we built this Antonidas the Hero Mage for Standard. Without discounts from Emperor Thaurasan available in Standard, it will be necessary to save a biscuit or two from Conjure Mana Biscuit to get an extra copy of Antonidas or Mordresh with Potion of Illusion. But with a nice bit of targeted card draw for your spells with Chandler and Talon to draw Mordresh or Antonidas, alongside a fair number of fire spells to keep the board clear with a little help from Reckless Apprentice, there's a good chance you'll be able to play Antonidas on an empty board and hit the opponent in the face three times. Both of these decks were quite fun but they both run Mordrush alongside the Hero Power Synergy Package. If you don't have Mordrush, or just prefer a more meta approach to this achievement, this Antonidas' quest deck from HS Replay is pretty powerful. And now that Antonidas actually benefits from spell damage, he'll be even more effective at taking the opponent down with his fireballs after questline completion. A discounted fire sale will most likely be effective at clearing the board enough to ensure Antonidas' fireballs all go face, almost certainly killing opponents with 27 damage from Antonidas thanks to Varden's spell damage. However you choose to set Antonidas up, have fun sending his fireballs face. The last of the mage achievements until the mini set arrives is Calligraphy Lessons. Fortunately, even if a spell that costs less than 5 mana is discounted by the Celestial Ink set, it still counts as 5 mana reduced when the ink set procs. So for the third stage of this achievement, you just have to trigger the ink set's effect with a spell in hand 60 times total. Any deck whatsoever with a fair number of spells will be fairly effective at knocking this out. We considered playing cards like Horde Pillager and Rubbaging Cobalt in a deck in Wild, and those will help speed things up if you choose to swap them in. But with two triggers per weapon and two weapons per deck, getting to 60 triggers didn't take very long at all with the first two decks we're introducing. In Standard, this Celestial Spell Quest felt quite good with a 55% win rate across 22 games. The discounts from the ink set hitting a Pexus Blast for early damage and board presence, 
ring toss to make it super easy to corrupt and play out, and refreshing spring water as a zero mana draw two and gain four mana crystals was amazing. Even when the discounts hit a cheaper card, it felt fine as we had only spent two mana early on to make it easier to chain a bunch of spells together in a single turn. If you're looking for a strong contender in standard, I'd recommend this one. But if you just want to have fun messing around with spells while knocking this out in wild, this Celestial Sky Temple deck was also a lot of fun. Now, before you queue this one up to play, I should note that if you care about winning, this deck had an amazing 100% loss rate across five games against meta decks. But we were able to do some broken stupid stuff with the deck, such as play two mana Masks of Cthune and cheat out Pyroblasts and Puzzle Boxes of yogg on turn five. And with help from the quest, we pretty much never ran out of spells to play to trigger the ink set. It's not strong, but it's a ton of fun. Speaking of not strong, but very fun decks, we're gonna throw one more deck in here that we can't really recommend for progress on the achievement, as you'll get a maximum of 10 mana reduced cost from the ink set per game. And that deck is The Aristocrats from Mark McKaysey. The reason we're including it is that it's hilariously funny to pull off, but wow, is it inconsistent. The idea is to discount the Pyroblasts to 5 mana with Naga Sandwich, copy them with Noblemen, and with the ink set equipped, it's theoretically possible to cast 40 damage in Pyroblasts for just 10 mana. Is it nearly impossible to pull off against wild meta decks? Pretty much. Reaching 10 mana is an illusion against the meta decks. But if you face an opponent doing something silly as well, such as, I don't know, shuffling 20 albatrosses into our deck, as you can see here, you might live long enough to pull off the dream. Certainly not a way to grind 300 mana in discounts from Celestial Ink Set, but if you're looking for something wacky to experiment with, you might give it a try. Good luck completing your calligraphy lessons. And that's a wrap. If you found this helpful, drop a like. I'll make a gambit that if you found this guide helpful by choosing not to stall on pressing the like button, others can also use it to reach their achievement goals as well. We'll be doing guides for the rest of the United Instormand achievements as well. So check back soon or subscribe because we're done grasping at straws for ways to motivate viewers to subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy participating in Experiments Live, check out our stream at twitch.tv forward slash ssalchemist. We currently stream on Saturdays and Sundays. And remember, you're awesome. Thank you for watching and have an awesome day.